Welcome to the Finite Math Podcast. Uh, in this video, we want to look at a, another application of the formula for an increasing annuity. Now, the problem is this. Suppose we have $1,000, but we want to accumulate 5000 So we want to do this by putting monthly payments into a, uh, an account here. Here's our $1,000. And so we want to accumulate some money here, and we'd like to put some payments in here so that after, for example, two years, uh, we're going to have our desired $5,000. All right. Now, there's uh, a couple ways to do this if we just, uh, it, it, and the problem is a little more complicated because we have this additional 1000 You see, if we if, uh, just had nothing here, to start with, and then we could go to this formula and say, okay, we wanted $5,000. Uh, we put in our uh, payment here. Uh, and we put in our, our rate, one plus, say, 5% a year. Uh, and so we would look at the compounding for, let's see, two years is 24 months. Okay, and divide that by 0.05 over 12. Okay, and so we could just uh, calculate the uh, payment uh, uh, in this particular formula here. Now, uh, to take a look at this, uh, we still want to use this formula. So what we have to do is to take into account this $1,000 in the beginning. Now, the $5,000 or the $1,000, if we just treat it as if it was in a separate account, it's going to accumulate a certain amount of money. And then we can view the deposits we're making as going into a, a second account here. And so what we want to do is to see what the value of each of these need to be. So if we just put the $1,000 in, how do we find out the future value of that? Well, that's just the old compound interest formula. We take 1,000 times what, 1 plus the rate per month would be 5% over 12, I should have used a simpler rate, uh, raised to the uh, 24 months here. And so, oh, let's see what that's going to come out to be. Well, let's go get a calculator and bring it back here. All right, so what are we going to calculate out of this? Well, let's just uh, do 1,000 times uh, parentheses 1 plus... 0.05 divided by 12. That gets us our monthly rate, and we want to do this for 24 months. Calculate out the value. So we see the value is going to be uh, 1104.94. Okay, so what do we come out with? We had 1104.94. Okay, so to get our $5,000, we really don't need uh, to get 4000 here. We have to get something less than that. So let's see what less than that are we going to come up with. So if we wanted 5000 here, and we want to get this, so what is that going to come out to be? Well, we have to do a little bit of arithmetic here. Well, let me see, 06. And then, uh, well, I guess it's 30... 8.95. Okay, so we really just have to uh, go back and uh, if we view this stream of money here, which has n nothing in it, we just really have to end up getting uh, 38.9506. So we can uh, replace the 38.95. It's our 5,000. And so we could actually calculate this value and then divide it into this to find out what our monthly payment is going to be. Well, let's do this with the uh, TVM uh, uh, solver. So we'll get our calculator again and come back here. Okay, so how do we go to the solver? So we go to the solver. Now, we were going to spend 24 months doing this. Our rate was 5%. Uh, we want to find our, we're assuming our payment, uh, our present value is zero. 
the future value that we want was 3895.06. Okay, and we want to make these contributions monthly, and the compounding period will be monthly. So what is our payment going to be? If we solve for this, it comes out to be uh, 154.65. All right, so our uh, monthly payments here, 154.65 is going to be what those payments turned out to be. That would allow us to accumulate uh, this $5,000 now. So the contribution, the original 1000 contributed uh, a little more than 1000 to that. Now, actually, let's take a look at another way of using the solver to do that. Notice that when we had the solver here, we skipped over the fact that uh, we had a present value entry. So, actually, we could solve this whole setup in a different way. We could go back and say, okay, I want to put a, have a present, well, let's see. Let's go and fix the future value first. If we want the future value to be 5,000, then what about the present value? Now, we have to be careful with signs here because remember the TVM solver works like a cash flow. So if we want to get $5,000 out as positive, our payments were going in negative. Our initial contribution would have had to be a negative 2. Otherwise, you're going to mess up the payment here. So if we do this, we'll come down to the payment, and I should solve it. it. It probably won't change. And so there we solved it, and we see again it's 154.65. So uh, we, what we did, we have actually seen uh, two ways to actually uh, solve a problem like this. If we assume that we had no initial deposit, it's a straightforward application either of this formula or the TBM solver. If we assume that there's an initial deposit, it's we could either split the money into two flows or we could just make use of the fact that in the TBM solver, uh, you can uh, require an initial deposit. Well, that's it. Thanks for stopping by.